You wanna know what makes a zombie game fun? I mean, you already know, it's the gore. We're just all sick, twisted individuals that are looking for a violent time on Dying Light 2. But to everyone's surprise, this is where the game fell short by a lot. There are multiple factors as to why people are disappointed with the gore system in Dying Light 2. But before we get into that, don't forget to like and subscribe. One of the biggest contributing factors as to why the gore doesn't even feel good has to be the subpar physics. For this part of the video, I've turned the brutality level to limited so we can focus more on the hit reactions, but we still have some of the gore included. I mentioned the physics in a recent video where I talked about how the enemies in the game react the exact same way anytime they're hit. And there are other problems like collision detection issues, flat reactions, and an overall inconsistency between the weapon's impact that results in a bad feel to the gameplay. One of the most notable qualities of Dying Light 1 was the spectacular physics system. Honestly, what Whatever they had going on there should have just been copied and pasted over to Dying Light 2, like everything else they did. All jokes aside, I seriously have no complaints about the physics that were featured in the original game. There was weight to the combat, the ragdolls were convincing with diverse reactions that created a satisfying feel to the gameplay. This is why to this day, more people are playing Dying Light 1 despite not getting regular updates. One big message I have to Techland is it's not about the updates and the content that you're adding. While it is nice, the foundation you're adding the content onto is very weak. Without addressing core gameplay elements like the physics and gore, you're simply delaying the inevitable. What is that exactly? People don't like playing the game because it just doesn't feel good to play. It's as simple as that. The areas that need the most improvement are the hit reactions and the viral physics. An example of much needed hit reaction improvement would be the kicking. Kicking an enemy whether they're alive or dead leaves a lot to be desired. The repeated animations with no no new reactions are just terrible. Take a look at kicking a corpse in Dying Light 1. Now versus Dying Light 2. See the difference? As for fixing the virals, their leap frequency alone is horrendous, not to mention the long animation that it pulls you into. But the focus here is that they still hit that invisible wall when they fly past you. I have no idea why the volatile leap got addressed months ago, but the virals have gone untouched? It makes no sense. Lastly, the melee combat reactions are just straight up bad. We see the same reactions and deaths every every single time an enemy is hit. Let's switch back over to the first game to see if there's a difference. Which one do you think looks better? In the original, the swings have so much more impact when they make contact. This is possible because of the superior physics and gore. But in the sequel, everything happens the same way every single time. They flop down or they just spin around in a circle and it's so boring and repetitive. Please fix this. Now onto the blood decals. Firstly, what is a blood decal in a game? It's a digital graphic or texture that is used to simulate the appearance of blood in visual media, such as 3D models in video games, animations, and other forms of digital art. Now that we have that out of the way, as we look at the blood decals in Dying Light 2, it looks like there are red pieces of spaghetti splattered everywhere. There's no thickness to the blood, no deep pools that dynamically trickle down the surrounding surfaces. As we travel back over to Huron, we can clearly tell there's a huge difference in the blood decals. There's more blood and it's not all stringy. It pools more naturally and it has a darker, grittier color to it. These are the key elements to making a gory zombie game that were obviously overlooked during the development of Dying Light 2. Another area that is problematic for the blood pooling is the area of the severed limbs that squirt out blood because it just doesn't land anywhere. I am unsure why this is the final product for the gore effect, but it could be so much better if the blood fell onto the infected as well as the direction the blood is spraying from. This would improve the immersion and overall appearance of the dismembered enemies. We can see when the bloaters explode, their blood decal leaves a much larger amount of blood. While it's not dynamic, it doesn't look like that cheap spaghetti look that we saw earlier. If Techlane can improve both the physics and the blood decals, they will breathe a new life into the feel of Dying Light 2 and would probably bring a lot of players back into 
conduit, which now leads me into the dismemberment system. Oh my, is it lame. I'm including effects like the intestines hanging out or the split jaws in this section of the video. When we talk about Dying Light 2 being repetitive, we always hear things about the map or the in-game events. But one of the most repetitive parts about this game is the dismemberment system. I'm not even saying that Dying Light 1 had any more variation to this, but the way the first game handled every other aspect of the gore just made it blend in so much better. As for the sequel, we see the exact same gore effect that is just so unnatural. For example, in the gut feeling update, there was this diagonal cut that was added, and it was cool the first few times that we saw it. Now it's pretty much all you see. Connecting this back to the physics, when the enemies were dismembered in the first game, the jello-like physics effect made the wounds less of the focus, but in this game, the corpses are so static that it brings the design of the gore front and center, making it so apparent that there's a lack of variation. Look, I hate to be that guy. But compare this game's gore to Dead Island 2's. I know that Dead Island 2 has a lot more going on to simulate it, but is it that hard to ask for some dangling intestines? Maybe some better slash marks rather than showing literally nothing? Maybe broken or cut limbs can dangle by a thread. Something to elevate the immersion would be greatly appreciated. Now onto the finishers. These were recently added into the game and they are very cool to use. I would like to see the ability to initiate finishers on the special infected, such as volatile tiles and the spitters, maybe even goons and demolishers. If all of these add their own special finishers, I think they would be nice additions to the overall brutality of the game. Now that is the brutality update everyone is asking for in Dying Light 2. What do you think Techland should add to the gore in the game? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe as the channel is getting so close to 1000 subscribers. I've also included a link to join my new community discord server in the description as well as the comments, so feel free to join. Anyway, I will see you all in the next video.